All right, I think we are now live on Wade Spencer's YouTube channel, guys. Sorry for the delays here. Welcome in to the channel. I've got a really cool show for you guys today, one that, that I've been thinking about for a while, and I've got a fantastic panel down below, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for coming tonight. We've got a great show. 30 questions I'm going to ask these folks below. And um, we've got a live show with a little bit of a podcast, so I'm mixing things in here, guys. Welcome in to Wade Spencer's YouTube channel. I'm going to have um, – I would typically give shout-outs here, but for respectful of everybody's time and the fact that we've got a ton of questions to go through, guys, I do see you in chat. Thank you so much for coming. So what I'm going to do is the show is going to be basically on eBay, guys. So we have 30 questions here. I've got them wrote down. I'm going to ask these questions. Each guest will have 30 seconds or so to answer the question. And then we're going to continue to go on to the next question. And if you guys have any any uh, thoughts or anything like that you want to put in chat, I'll try to answer it at the end with a Q&A, depending on time. But uh, without further ado, I'm going to let both every one of our guests, amazing guests below, introduce themselves and kind of who they are and where they're at on social media. So we'll start with Chaz. What's up, guys? Chaz from Side Hustle Pros, YouTube, Side Hustle Pros, as well as Instagram. Uh, we run primarily Amazon. We also mix in the eBay side as well. So I figured I'd hop on here, hang out with these guys for the evening. So thanks for having me on. Absolutely, absolutely. And then guys, those of you who don't know, he's actually only like, what, 30 minutes from me. So Chaz yeah, we're close. Yes. And I, I, I'm always peeping on his Instagram, guys, because I'm curious what he's doing in the state of Oregon. So really one of my favorite Instagrams to count to follow. And so he's got a live show after this show, guys. So um, I'll, I'll remind you all after the show is over, but we're going to have to hop over there after this. All right, let's go on to the next one of my most favorite Instagram accounts to follow as well. And we have Ecom Moose. Do you want to go and introduce yourself, sir? Hey, guys. Moose here. Ecom Moose on YouTube and on Instagram. Just glad to be here with you guys. Ready to get this started. Absolutely. Ecom Moose, by the way, guys, does this cop and drop where he shows, you know, shoes and different things he's buying and then what they're going for on eBay. So really cool Instagram, guys. You should follow him. All right, let's get on to the next. We have Jim. You want to go ahead and introduce yourself, my man? Sure. Hey, I'm Jim Butler. I'm a reseller of men's clothing. I go by the Curated Clothier or Curated Clothier. And uh, thanks for having me on again, Wade. Good to be back. Absolutely, absolutely. And guys, he is the master of men's clothing. Um, really cool Instagram, really cool YouTube. So I, I appreciate you, Jim, because I've learned a lot from you. And so I'm starting to dabble in suits. So cool. I appreciate you. All right, let's go on to the next. Resellicious, go ahead and introduce yourself. Sure, I'm Resellicious. I sell on eBay uh, retail arbitrage, probably like 75% shoes. And I post my finds and also comparisons on Instagram. Um, Resellicious at YouTube as well. All right, I, we're not gonna spend too much time here, but I wanna tell you guys um, this story, this funny story. I was on Risa Alicia's, um Instagram, her uh, Insta stories, guys. And I can't remember, you gotta tell me if I'm right. I was joking around with Moose about this, but I remember one, you were like, okay guys, I'm running out of space. Like, do I get rid of the furniture? Do I get a bigger place? Like, it was hilarious. It was hilarious, Moose, you remember that, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I'm afraid of like getting evicted, someone popping in my apartment and just being like, oh, this is the crazy. So I had to get rid of some stuff so I could have the semi-normal look in the background. That's, ama that's amazing. It's hilarious. I, I would have got rid of the furniture, too. All right, let's go on to the next OSS Empire. Sam, go ahead and introduce yourself, my man. Hello, everyone. My name is Sam, a.k.a. OSS Empire. Uh, I sell on eBay, Amazon, and many, like a few other different platforms. Uh, pretty much on Instagram, every day I kind of share what, I, what I'm doing, where I'm working on, and that's about it. And uh, thank you for having me, Wade. Absolutely, guys. I'm going to share a little story about Sam. I think it was another hilarious Instagram account. And Sam's Instagram is funny. One day I was joking with him before the show. His car broke down. The battery was out, right? He was on the side of the, the road, the freeway. And Sam does an Insta story, and he's like, hey, guys, like just nonchalant, like no stress at all. My car's broke down. I'm going to be here for a few hours. Like, <laughs> um, I'm sorry, but like the most calm guy ever when his car breaks down. So Thank you, yeah. I, Sam's going to live until he's 100 because he doesn't have any stress. Um, all right, let's go on to one of my faves, the Clutch Swag, the podcast that we have here on the show. Go ahead, my man. 
What's going on, Wade? Thank you for that intro. The uh, podcast version. My name is Kevin, uh, K.A. Clutch or the Clutch Swag on IG. I basically uh, sell shoes in bulk. I got a ton of shoes I pick up from outlet stores, and uh, that's my thing, sneakers. And I'm not as impressive as some of the other sellers on here. I just get in and do what I love to do, and that's sneakers. You know what I mean? I'm all about the hustle, and my posts are majorly based on motivating people to follow um, in that kind of in that kind of footstep or path. Just do what you love to do. Well, first and foremost, I'm going to share one quick thing about this individual. Um, one thing, not only is he really inspirational, he's got a fantastic Instagram, guys. And by the way, as you're watching this down below, everybody's link for YouTube is down there. Um, and we'll put it in chat periodically. But I remember one day um, he was on his Insta Live and he was saying that he had the, the bug, the stomach flu or something. And that was actually, ironically, the same time that I got the flu from my little kid. And um, I was like laid out thinking I was going to, you know, that was my last day to live on this beautiful earth. And then I saw his post and he's like, yeah, guys, I have the, I have the flu, kind of like Sam. I had the flu, but I'm still working. He's like in bed working with a picture of him. And uh, <laughs> it was super inspirational. So I, so I took a shower and within a half an hour I was up and, and half working because I saw him. I was like, well, if he can do it, I can do it. So really cool Instagram account, guys. I appreciate um, I, that, Wade. Yes. I stalk all you guys. So. All right, let's go on with the show, guys. Let's get on with the questions. Um, we'll be quick here. You got 30 seconds to answer the questions. I do have a stop clock on my phone, guys. Um, so I will uh, I will definitely be timing you if you go over 30 seconds. But um, these questions, hopefully they help, guys. They will be basic, some basic eBay questions, some not basic. And uh, they're in no order whatsoever. And uh, I'll ask each person individually. Every single one will go, and then we'll just go to the next question. So, guys, um, this is the first question for Chaz here. And then, uh, and then we'll go through the line here. So the first question is, is what do you recommend people do to prepare for fourth quarter? Because it's right around the corner. Uh, for toys specifically, I killed it with toys last year because in August I started paying attention to what the hot trending toy was going to be. We don't know right now, but towards the end of August, September, you're going to see some certain toys pop up. Keep an eye on those and go deep on them. All right, my man, Moose. Uh, for Q4, I, I, I've been buying coats, uh, boots, a lot of winter wear, and a lot of the, the winter gear all summer because most of that stuff gets clearance like the previous seasons. They're getting ready to roll out all the new stuff. So buy up all the, the previous seasons. It might the, the styles might be a little bit late, but most people are shopping on eBay aren't uh, on trend. So they're wonderful products, and, uh, and they'll sell great Q4 come Q4. Nice. And I, I, Sam smiling. He's, we got a beautiful face that just joined us. All right, Jim, go ahead, my man. All right, mate. From the men's clothing side, I would say don't procrastinate. Don't list anything. Like, don't put off listing. So don't board stuff. If you have coats or sweaters or jackets, list them now. Uh, because I think I find that if you board stuff, you kind of fall behind. So you always want to be ahead of the game. All right. Resell. Let me. Uh, yeah. Um, just forgot what I was going to say. Um, totally forgot, but I'll come up with another tip for you. Um, okay. I would say uh, you can sometimes, if you look at the comps, you can actually raise your prices at that time and get the higher end of the price range. So recheck your listings and see if you can do that. That's huge because you got to check your listings, make sure going in fourth quarter that it all messed up, especially all the glitches with eBay. All right, Sam, what what are you going to do for fourth quarter? So for fourth quarter, what you want to do is just try to build as much inventory as you can right now because once you know Q4 comes, you have everybody shopping pretty much for holidays, so everybody's trying to get trying to buy at that time. So if you build your inventory now at that time, it will just going to be smooth ride, uh, go to garage sales because during winter time, most of the time they're not going to do a uh, garage sale stuff like that so just try to build as much inventory as you can right now now and yeah that's it all right kevin what about you what are you doing for fourth quarter i'm so happy can you guys hear me right now yeah all right cool 30 seconds cool so i agree with sam the best way to go is to scale you got to get items that aren't moving to move and then reinvest that money into new product that's going to sell quickly or give you a good return on investment and just keep doubling down. 
any capital you can clear to put into inventory is 100% the focus. Agree with Sam and just uh, add that little piece to it. That's it. Huge, huge. All right, guys. So next question. Um, what What is your morning routine? And the reason I want to ask this is, you know, a lot of successful people, they get up early, like they, they knock out stuff early on in the day. So, Chaz, what do you do? What's your early routine every morning? Can I just say this kind of sucks going first? I can't listen to everyone else's answers first. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Um, I, for the last, so I had a mental burnout like three, four weeks ago, which that's a whole different conversation. I, in the last two weeks, have been slowly transitioning back, and I'm on day two of waking my butt up at 530 in the morning. Reading gets done first, big fan of personal development reading, and then I hit the gym and I take care of myself. I fill my cup up first before I get to the office at 10. And I'm going to keep doing that every day. Nice. That's a good, good tip, guys. 5 a.m. That's tough. All right, guys, let's continue to go in order. Moose, you're next. Okay, so I'm up. Basically, when the sun comes up, I, I get up. I, I haven't used an alarm for years, but um, I keep the windows open at night. So when the sun comes up, I'm up. First thing I do, I have a couple glasses of water. I jump in, take a cold shower. While I'm in the shower, I'm listening to at least five to ten minutes of motivational speeches that that I find on YouTube. Or they're, they're on the app on my phone. And so I'll listen to those, and it kind of gets gets me going. And I'll eat something small and do something physical, some, some kind of physical activity in the morning. So whether it's cycling, trail running, kayaking, something to get the blood flowing. And then once I get home from that, I'm able to take a warm shower, kind of slow down, and get to work. All right, that's pretty good. Jim? Uh, I do things a little bit differently. Um, I don't really have a set schedule, but I try to get up early. Uh, I try to get eight hours of sleep. I eat breakfast first thing, two eggs, two slices of bacon. And then, actually, I get my relaxation or meditation, you could call it, out of the way by going to the pool for an hour. Uh, where I live, there's a pool here that stays open year round. So right now I go to the pool, I jump in the water and then I kind of just relax and kind of gather my thoughts for the day before I get into everything else. All right, resell. So in the morning, I'm, I'm usually pretty busy throughout the day because I have a full-time job as well. So I usually wake up before work first thing on my mind is getting some caffeine in my system. So I go to the fridge, do that. I usually pack my eBay packages so I can take them on my lunch break. That's pretty All much right. it. Sam, you're next, buddy. All right. So early in the morning, 4.30, uh, I'll go to the gym. Then afterwards, uh, pretty much uh, – I'll just try to plan out what's going on throughout the day. In the morning, I do a stock uh, pretty much at 9 o'clock. I mean, around 9 30 i stopped you know pretty much watching you know planning out my day for the stock and around 10 30 i pretty much stopped doing that and just start with ebay uh my day my days are on and off it's kind of different depending for, for example like thursday friday saturday I, i'm always up in the morning because that's when i source uh you know most of the time uh the other days i just go with the with the flow and just listing shipping but yeah, I wake up at four thirty. Try I try to go to sleep around eleven thirty sometimes, but yeah, sometimes I go over like two o'clock. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, Kevin, what do you do, man? What do you do for routine? You guys, if you follow me on IG, see my same routine is every single day. It's uh, same as Sam, four thirty a.m. start. I used to do four, but the gym doesn't open till five, so I felt like that hour was just um, kind of too long. So it's gym by five a.m. every day. That's an hour. Afterwards, it's eat, um, meal prep for the day, which is everything's made. It's just bag it up. So that way you can just throw your meals in, heat them up, eat them, and get back to work. Um, it takes me like five minutes to make one of my meals. It, it's beautiful. I love it. And then um, throughout that, it's uh, eBay for two hours from 8 a.m. to about 10 a.m. From 10 a.m., I do my regular job, which is until 4 p.m., um, that's Monday through Friday. And then I'm always off on the weekends, excluding holidays. Um, so it's, it's that routine. And, and then I work at the, at night, um, on, on my passion, uh, create content, answer emails, list product, uh, you name it, whatever it is. Well, I think one common theme is getting up early here, guys. Um, all right. So let's go on to, let's go on to more eBay questions, guys. I kind of wanted to get the personal stuff, figure out kind of how you guys, you know, plan your day. The next question I have basically is, 
uh, it's part, it's one of two basically. So when you go to, you know, sourcing, wherever you're sourcing at, whether it's, you know, retail or thrift stores, um, do you advertise that you're a reseller? And then the second question to that is if you do advertise, like what's some tips or tricks that you have to build that relationship? Some people use gift cards or just remembering the name. Like, so those kind of two part question. Uh, part one for that, for me, this opening line, cause being a reseller, there's always that fear, especially when you're a newbie, when that one employee comes up or that manager and sees you scanning, everyone freezes, right? So I stop thinking in terms of I'm the only one making, making money here, right? So I one day started using a different phrase because I was trying to think of a way that I can add value to the store managers, right? The department managers, because now I know they, if they hit their quotas on sales, they get money, they get bonuses. So I started using the phrase, I run an online retail business and I help stores like yours move more product. So then it flipped over from just me making a profit to helping them move more product. And that was a game changer for me. And then yeah, typical stuff, Starbucks gift cards, guys go a long, long way. Uh, I'm up in Portland, so Voodoo Donuts is like the big thing around here. So I'll drop off some Voodoo every now and then. But uh, yeah, any, any way you can, you can constantly thank them um, pats on the back, like literally all that kind of stuff does help. Awesome tips guys. Let's continue to go on to Sam or uh, excuse me, Moose. Go ahead, my man. Yeah. So I I've also used gift cards, uh, especially around the holidays. You know, you want to, you want to make sure that you, you take care of the people that took care of you. But I think, I think a smile and just treating the employees with respect can get you a long way, you know, because you, when you start to develop that relationship with them, I've had people see me filling a cart and then go in the back room and grab things and bring it out to me because I have that kind of rapport with them. So it, it's all about the relationships. And it, I don't think it can hurt. Uh, I don't think it can hurt you to tell somebody that you're that you're a reseller. I would agree. What, what about you, Jim? Well, I don't really advertise that I'm a reseller, but it, it uh, tends to be pretty obvious. Um, hopefully it is. I mean, I don't try to hide it, but if somebody asks me, I tell them freely. Um, as far as like getting along good with, I mean, I mostly shop at the bigger thrift stores, Goodwill and Salvation Army. Uh, so they're larger organizations. I don't know if they necessarily care about me shopping there, uh, but I always round up at the Goodwill. I always find that that kind of makes it a nicer, positive, more positive transaction. Um, so I don't know if that helps or not, but I do it every time. You know, if it's 90 cents or 10 cents, I still do it. What about you, Resell? So, no, I don't actually tell people I'm a reseller. Um, some of them kind of know, but I go to sometimes 30 or 40 different stores in a week. So I'm not usually, I'm, I'm at so many different places. I'm not really building those relationships, but it's definitely something on my mind, especially with what everyone's saying now um, to do. I just haven't really done so. Especially since you're, re you're, you're sourcing like late at night, right? At, at Ross. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All right, Sam, what about you? Uh, so mine kind of depends on what kind of situation I'm in. If I'm doing RA, uh, sometimes they kind of know because they see me a lot of times just doing it. But if I'm doing garage sales, sometimes, you know, you don't want to let them know that you're a reseller because if they know that you're a reseller, they will try to bump up the price. So I just go with the flow and I kind of just go, go about it like how I feel about the person because I'm pretty much most of the time doing the negotiation. Like I buy a lot of stuff in bulk. Uh, so I just, you know, try to give them like a reason to lower the price even more. So I just go about, you know, the, depending on the situation. When I'm doing RA, I try to create a relationship by, you know, just talking to them in a daily basis, asking them questions. And they kind of just, you know, they're, they're human. So they just, you know, they're always there to help sometimes. So, yeah. Kevin? What about you? All right. So relationships are a hundred percent a key to, uh, to getting, you know, at least my stuff done at the stores. I think that without knowing the people I know, and, and I'm not saying like buying people, anything is, is what's built those relationships, but being consistent and knowing that you bring value to the business. Um, I think somebody did say that also knowing a store's budget and knowing what their motivation is, is a hundred percent the way that you conversate with anybody. You need to know what drives that person. So I know for a fact, um, when stores are doing worse, um, in a certain, you know, in a certain sales month or something like that, that I can, 
um, come in and make a big difference. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell stores, you know, if there's product available, if, if this stuff is, is out on the floor and I'm able to purchase it, then I'll be there to make that happen. Um, and I, and I, I, I know that a lot of my business does carry some of the local stores that I work with. So, um, it is nice to be able to be mutually beneficial that way. I think that's a good question because a lot of people, they're unsure if they should say if they're a reseller or not. So, all right. So let's get on to the, uh, some more questions here. So I, no particular order, obviously, but what do you guys have any resources, website, like website, res, uh, websites that are good resources for your eBay business in particular, or any resources that you use? It's actually a really good question. Now that I think about it. Yeah. I'll jump uh, in. Um, yeah. Jump in. Oh yeah, the order. Um, I like checkaflip.com. Check a flip, all in word. Uh, it's a really simple, clean, fast site where you can look stuff up to see what it's selling for, rather than go through the eBay sold listings. It's a pretty good um, aggregation average of all that. Uh, offer up Craigslist, uh, Facebook Marketplace. Uh, Craig, I said Craigslist. A five mile app. But yeah, if you're very consistent with it, you kind of know what, you know, get listed every day and you can kind of make moves uh, by just doing it in a daily basis. Just don't do it one time. Try to be consistent. And, you know, because when you see something, you might miss it. If you do it like every three days, four days, just try to be consistent in the different marketplaces. And uh, yeah, just check it out like here and there every day in a while. Yeah. But yeah. Any other websites or resources? I got one for you. Um, I, I was thinking raise the, uh, the marketplace where you can buy discounted gift cards. I like to use that. And then, um, yeah, that's probably my best one for sure. And, and what about, um, another question that I put down here is, do you guys have any apps or paid programming that you guys like to do for your reselling business? Any apps that you possibly think that can help you or paid programming? You know what? I got a couple of resources. Um, and actually one of them is paid. But uh, so therapy, I like to use like Google or I'm sorry, uh, eBay solds, but you can also use therapy for historical data. If you, if you found something that the solds aren't going to show up in the previous 60 days or whatever. Um, and also Google is your best friend, like not just Google, Google trends. I mean, when you're looking for for what, what people are searching for and you're going to go after that, and you want to know what, when is the bulk of that search coming through and you can you can follow Google trends. A lot of times they'll give you keywords um, that are starting to trend, and 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 that's how I found a lot of uh, successful products that I've sold on Amazon is actually reverse engineering and finding them through Google Trends and then going after them. We were actually talking about that last night. That's pretty smart. I, I like Google Trends. Um, anything else, guys? Any other apps that you use on your phone to list, possibly to eliminate like the background or anything like that? Dropbox, I just uh, take pictures on my phone, pretty much upload them there and just go on my computer and uh, I just pick the pictures from there and just upload them. It makes things a lot smoother because I have people listening. I just tell them, uh, just list it in there and I have different folders for the different uh, accounts so they can just upload them. If it's just shoes, they just throw on the shoes uh, store and if it's just a very miscellaneous item, they just put it in a different store. So yeah, Dropbox. Nice, nice, nice. All right, let's go on to the next guy. So what advice would you give somebody? I know that some of you guys have full-time jobs. I was there recently, but what advice would you give somebody that's looking to go full-time? Like if you were to give a few pieces of advice, what would it be? Chaz, you want to start, my man? Yeah, uh, biggest one is cash flow. Like don't, I'm all, I'm all about, you know, one of my phrases that I, I always say is jump and build your wings on the way down. I'm all about the risk in that life, but you got to play it smart, right? So make sure you do not quit your job without playing it smart. And that's having positive cash flow month after month to where you can live on the income and still have enough to keep building the business. Because if you keep spending the same amount on bills and spending the same amount on inventory, you're always going to get the same amount of sales and you're not going to scale. So have positive cash flow. Um, that's hands down the biggest one. What about you, Moose? I think it really depends on your situation. You know, if, if you're, for example, if you're married and you have kids and, and you know, you obviously want to keep your day job and, and not risk too much. But in my situation, I'm single. I don't have kids, um, you know, so I, I can take more risk. And uh, before I went full time, it wasn't really my decision to go full time. 
at that at, at that minute when I went full time, but still I had enough savings saved up to sustain me for a year to take care of all of my living expenses. I could I could even make that go a little bit further if I wanted to, um, and that that allows me to keep rolling the money into the business. And then at the end of the year, if I just you know if the business does well enough, I can always decide to pay myself a salary at the end of the year and take that money out of the business, or I can leave it in the business and keep it keep it rolling depending on what my situation looks like then. So I'd say. If, if you don't have a job, you got to have some kind of cushion. You have to have something to uh, make sure that you can get to those next, the next step. Jim, what about you, man? You have Jim's task. And I think oh, those yeah. are. Yeah. I mean, I basically do the same thing every day. I, I could have said that in the other question, but have a, some, have some kind of a schedule. I think that's really good. Even though I don't really, I have a set of tasks that I try to do every single day. Um, but know your expenses, not only for, you know, taxes, that's really important, but also for your living expenses. You got to get that covered every month. And I was going to definitely say cash flow, but Chaz, you got me on that. But um, I mean, that was cash flow is cash is king. You got to have cash left over at the end of the day. So you really have to value your time. And the way I value my time is me personally, I try to sell, source and sell higher and higher profit items. Every single time I go out, I try to push a little bit more on the margin. I think that's a good tip. Cash flow is amazing too. What about you, Resell? Do you have any input on that if somebody's wanting to go full time? So I'm currently not full time. I have a full time job, but uh, if I do go full time, there's a couple things that I would want to have in place. I'd want to have some replenishable products in place, so I'm not always looking for inventory and dependent on what I can find to make money that month. Um, so that's one thing. Um, and another thing is I'm kind of looking into, cause with a job you're getting income and you don't have to actually spend your money to get the income. So I'm looking for alternative income streams like print on demand or something where there's no investment of capital required to get money back. So that's, uh, kind of what's going on in my brain. Someone in that position. Huge, huge. What about you, Sam? Uh, so I say it, depends, it kind of depends on what kind of situation the person is in, but I really recommend the person to just work more and like don't just do it too early because you might have to depend on the income that you bring in by selling items or you never know one day you might, you might get suspended, something might happen. So you have to kind of, until you get feel comfortable until you make a certain amount of money, I don't, I, I wouldn't recommend it. But what you can do is if you don't like the job, what I did was I didn't have any money when I first started. So what I, I was working at Walmart, Ross, getting a employee discount, sometimes up to 40%. And I was hustling by selling like used computers locally, buying cars for people, and I get a commission, a scholarship money that I was going to full school. So pretty much, you just work as hard as you can, like in the beginning, so you can just build capital and inventory. Once you do that, you can cut. You don't have to worry as much uh, on the business. It's just going. You know, cash flow is like Chad said is very important. So just work as hard as you can, and don't do it until you feel very comfortable or until you have at least six months of saving just you know sitting down so if something goes wrong you don't have to panic or you don't have to put somebody at risk really good stuff kevin what about you man yeah i think it's uh it's all relative to the person who has to make that decision's goals so for each person um you need to know your numbers 100 percent. you need to know what benefits you really need to know um what way you need to weigh out that pro and con. So if you have a job and you're thinking of leaving it, or if, uh, if you're, you know, trying to start into something like this, you need to know every detail about what you're looking to get into. And, uh, and again, it's based on your goals. So like for me, I work for abundance. Um, I don't work to, you know, uh, to, to say that I love doing what I do for a living, but it, it's, 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 paying into the goals I have for the future and investments I want to make. And, uh, you know, there, there's tons of benefits to each side of it. So you just have to weigh out your options and, and Kate, take it on a case by case basis. I always get a lot of like, when am I, when can I go full time? So that, I think those are really good stuff. Cash flow really too, Chaz. But all right, so let's go on to the next. I think this is a big one, guys. I put this down because a lot of people ask this, but um, this is a two part question. One, um, what kind of tax software do you use? Do you use Outlook, GoDaddy, like just Excel, Excel Docs? Like, how do you keep track of your inventory 
And then also like for taxes. And then also, do you guys have a CPA or do you guys, you know, how do you do your taxes basically is what a lot of people are asking. So we'll start with the, uh, we'll start with Chess. Uh, GoDaddy is what we use to track just the daily because uh, it automatically syncs up with all your different accounts. So that's super easy to use. You can create your own custom tabs. So if I know that I, you know, me or Trista goes to Goodwill, it automatically syncs up and, and categorizes that Goodwill as an eBay inventory purchase. Um, and then, yes, we do have a CPA. And of course, any of us content creators, we always get asked about taxes. We have no idea how they work. Typically, I just give my GoDaddy reports and all that fun stuff to my to my guy and he handles the rest. I don't know how it gets done. He tells me how much I owe or how much I get at the end of the year. <laughs> what about you, Moose? So I use uh, I use QuickBooks and I use uh, Google Sheets, but basically the same advice. Uh, you want to leave that up to the professionals. Those guys study the laws that are constantly changing. You don't want to get caught with your pants down. Hand that work over to somebody who enjoys doing that kind of work and focus on what you're good at. At least get some get some help on that, right? Because you don't not want to pay your taxes. Um, what about you, Jim? I keep it pretty simple. I don't have a special guy, but I use Jackson Hewitt for the past couple of years. They're pretty good. They're pretty inexpensive. And you just walk right in whenever and get it done in an hour or so, as long as you're organized. And I stay organized with Google Sheets. I have a spreadsheet for everything. <laughs> um, I keep track of all my mileage, and I use an app called Cam Scanner to scan all my receipts in in case they ever want to see them nice nice what, what about you resell so i do them myself i'll probably change that uh next year but i use the custom scoof field on amazon ebay and i just put in the price i'll put in like uh you know ross 29.99 so i have a record of my item cost and then i use google sheets and just total everything I, I think that's really cool too, like the SKU in eBay to put how much you paid for the item. Um, I think that's a really cool tip. What about you, Sam? Uh, so I use uh, GoDaddy and I also have my own uh, spreadsheet that I use because I just want to know what I'm doing. And sometimes I just try to figure out where I'm doing better, like where I'm sourcing. Like if it's a good thing, I try to just do it over and over. But at the end of the year, I just go to CPA and we'll try to figure out because I always try to stay organized by doing it like every week myself and when i just go there i just give give them and just it's very smooth so i just use uh, godaddy and my own spreadsheet and kevin you're doing a lot of volume over there how are you doing it man oh, i gotta keep on muting this thing uh so i use quickbooks i use google sheets uh for me personally i keep up to date on it just because i like to know the math behind uh the madness but i have a cpa that handles everything for me um, and I also use an app, uh, mile IQ, and I use that for, um, multiple things. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's really helpful at the end of the year. I mean, it gives you a PDF summary of everything that you did and, uh, it's super clean. I mean, there's so many tools out there anymore. It makes it so much, so much easier. I mean, as long as you're organized, you're pretty good. All right. So let's go on to the next question. I think this is good. This is going to be two part just so we can uh, bust out some of these questions. So the next question is, is, um, should you open up a business account or a business for your eBay or reselling journey in, in general? And then the, the, the second question is, is do you guys have your reselling license or do you even really need that? So I know it differs per state and kind of where you're sourcing, but so should you open up a business and have a, you know, all that. And then also should you have your reselling license? I would definitely recommend um, the business. Yes, um, both for, you know, if you want to do something above sole proprietor, you can go LLC or et cetera. Of course, talk to your CPA about that. Like Wade said, varies state to state. Um, but also a business account is great because then it totally separates what you're doing. So you don't want to mix that money in, especially in the beginning, because it's not you're not teaching yourself how to truly treat it like a business if you're constantly just mixing it in. So I'm a big fan of doing that right, right from the get go. Um, and then I'm actually in Oregon as well. So uh, we don't have a sales tax, which means we don't have an official reseller certificate. Oregon gives us this wait. I don't know. I don't know if you've done that, but it's like this just tiny little PDF that we fill out. It's like three lines if somebody needs it. So we're pretty fortunate. What about you, Moose? I would say if, if you want a business, if you want to, you have to treat this like a business. Like if, in my opinion, you should look, 
you should try to build this business in a way where you can sell it one day. Even if you don't plan on it, it just, it, it makes it in, in your mind, this is a business. So you treat it that way. Like, like uh, Chaz said, you have the business accounts, you have your everything separate. You know, you have a tax ID number, a tax exempt form so that you're not paying sales tax. If you do live in that, in a state like that, you do have a reseller certificate. If your state requires that in Ohio, we don't, but um, yeah, I think you should be as official as you can be because, uh, it, the more you treat your, yourself like a business, the more you're going to see the results like a business. What about you, Jim? Uh, it really depends. It's up to the individual. If you want to keep things small, if you're just, maybe if you're single, uh, you can keep it as a sole proprietorship like I do. But if you want to go big eventually, or if you want to go big from the get-go and have an employee, then you definitely have to do the, the, the actual business LLC. Uh, reseller certificate. I actually never heard of that. So, um, I'm, I don't have one. Um, but yeah, I'll have to look into that. <laughs> what about you reseller? Let's just, so I'm just a sole proprietor right now, but I did open up an LLC. I haven't switched all my accounts over. I'm kind of scared of the tax part. I don't know how to do it, but I definitely want to switch over because if you want to do wholesale, you have to sign up by giving them your, um, reseller license number, or sorry if that's not the right term, but um, that number. And I've actually signed up for a few sites and it was really easy just by providing that. So definitely if you want to do anything that's not, you know, thrifting or retail arbitrage, I think you would probably need to look at that. Sam? Uh, uh, like someone said, uh, it, it kind of depends on the person how much they want to grow. If it's hobby, you don't really need it. But if you're making profit, you might want to get into that because uh, with having a business, there are a lot of positive parts. Like, you know, you don't have to pay for the equipment you use. They can get tax exemption for that. Like, the, you know, lights, if in the air you use, they, I don't want to get into all that because it's, it's a CPA thing. I, I don't want to give wrong information, but it is very helpful if you have that and having a resale certificate if you're buying a lot of stuff uh you can get a disc uh, you know you don't have to pay tax for it because you have to pay tax at the end so i think it's very positive if you're trying to scale the business to have it in the beginning what about you kevin so for me i'm lucky uh the one guy said he's in oregon that's awesome i didn't even know about that i'm in pa and i sell uh sneakers there's no sales tax on sneakers in pa which is one of three states in the u.s that has that so thank you pa keep that keep that going on keep that popping um besides that uh, i don't have a uh, a tax uh reseller uh form or anything like that i, I don't need it um yeah man i i'm i'm fortunate with that oh nope. My next question is really simple. I'm curious. Everybody's in different states. Give us like three areas that you guys love thrifting at. Like where, where's your three, like you don't have to give like honey holes or anything, but where, where's three good areas that you love for purchasing merchandise and sourcing? Uh, ours is going to be Wade, cover your ears. <laughs> Eugene, <laughs> Eugene has, that's a, that's a city. Eugene has amazing Goodwills, thrift stores, et cetera. Second favorite is garage sales around uh, right up in this guy's backyard, actually Beaverton Hillsboro area. You guys have amazing garage sales and he knows we live an hour away. We're in a small town, so we have to drive out to find those places. Um, third for retail arbitrage is going to be over on the east side of like Portland. We've done really well in kind of that Clackamas area. And, and Jess, can you add on to that real quick? Like, mm -hmm. do you have any like techniques that you use when you're at garage sales or different areas that you're sourcing to like negotiate prices like there's a lot of good techniques that you can use for example like pausing before you know you negotiate stuff like that do you have any tips when you're rolling up on a garage sale to negotiate yeah typical on tip number one you've got to bundle you can't just I mean, really can you just walk up with one single item and negotiate that but if you have multiple that's where you really can strike those deals um and i'm a big fan of that pause technique go up there um and people have different verbiage and phrasing there's not one size fits all you got to try out different ones see what works best for you and what's what flows most naturally for you but for the most part yeah bundle 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 as much as you can what about you moose um so i I like to source the suburbs of major cities and I won't name exact cities, but I will just say that I've been, uh, I've been, in, I, I'm familiar with their, that the fact that there's no sales tax in, in Pennsylvania, I'm familiar <laughs> with the, the tax with the 10% sales tax in, uh, in Chicago. 
uh, Detroit. I mean, like nowhere safe from me. So. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Jim? Uh, I guess, I mean, I'm really lucky. I am near a pretty rich zip code. So I would suggest like this Goodwill down the road. It's just amazing what I find there. Um, go to the richer zip codes where the Goodwills are rather than the other way around. Um, other than that, like I've been really lucky with Uptown Sheepskate. Actually, they're not everywhere, but they have like 200 something stores throughout the country. Uh, they're pretty good on their sale days, that is. And uh, also smaller thrift stores. I think a lot of people just go to the bigger stores too often where it's like the smaller thrift stores. Just Google your area. Um, I, I'm not, I won't give out any of mine in Richmond. Nobody's probably here anyway. But, um, you know, just keep Googling thrift stores in your area and you're going to find ones that you didn't even know were there. And also search on Facebook, too. That That's a good tip. What about you, Resellicious? Uh, I shop at the main retail stores, the Ross, Marshalls, Burlington. We have like 30 Rosses here where I live within probably 20, 25 miles. So I've never really run out of stores to go to. Those big three, I think everyone who does RA kind of knows about those, so. Oh yeah, oh yeah. What about you, Sam? Uh, so I'm pretty much all over the map. Uh, RA, OA, Gry, so pretty much, I just try to go all over the map and see where I'm, you know, good at and one thing that I can give advice to is like whenever you at garage sales state sales uh, whatever you meet someone at like from offer up try to make a relationship because those can become your resources I had three actually that I met at offer up and that I can just give them a call anytime and pick up items that I can just filter through them you know they sometimes if they want to just clear stuff out they give me a call. I just go there and make a deal with them. So just try to build a relationship uh, when you meet certain people. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Kevin, what about you, buddy? Let me get me unmuted. Um, I would say probably my favorite place is to source would be anywhere local. I really like Philadelphia. Um, it's not far from me. And uh, I have a lot of uh, friends up that way that I, you know, I can go up there and I can I can really get a lot of stuff. And, and not only that, with, you know, within 20 minutes, there's stores right over into Jersey that um, also do pretty well as, as well. Um, New York is cool. But I do like, as far as the negotiating tactics, I like um, the pause technique's awesome. But I also like being able and willing to ask somebody, um, what is it that gets this deal done? And and really just being upfront, transparent with somebody, um, the, the art of negotiation is not dead. A lot of people think that it is. I think that most people that think that are just not doing it right. And there's definitely ways um, to talk to people and you just have to be human. People want a script um, and a way to like talk to somebody. You just need to be transparent and really understand um, that dance, that conversation, and, and go back and forth and, and bring value to them. So that's always cool, too. I, I always try to get my hands dirty and negotiate if I can. So I got two tips, guys. I know I'm not a part of this, but uh, one tip basically that I learned, both of them I learned on my um, interviews I too. So one tip is if you find something that you're really interested in the garage sale, don't right away ask the price and try to negotiate right away. Like get to know the person and walk around the garage sale, look at stuff that maybe you're not even interested in to build that relationship, to go back to the item that you want. Um, so that's one tip. Another tip too is um, if you find an item, even if you're not interested in it, ask what the price that is to gauge how much they're pricing their items on. So that way when you find an item that you actually like, you can see if they're kind of on the higher end or the lower end. And, and you can do that by asking on an item that you're not necessarily wanting uh, because then at that point after that, you can ask at prices to some other items that you really want. So I don't know. I'll use those two. Wait, uh, can I throw in one tip? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you ever see a price, don't ask them if they can go lower. Just make them an offer. Simple as that. Just don't try to, you know, drag it. Just if you see a price and if you, you know, do, do your research and just tell them, hey, can you do that? Then if they're willing to do that, just add more stuff and try to make a bundle, like Chad said. That's a good one. That's a good one, actually. I, I love this. I get, I'm, I'm like already getting stuff already, so I'm writing down notes, guys. All right, so let's go on to the next one. This is, uh, I think this is going to be interesting, guys. I get a lot of questions like this, so it's a two-part question. One, 
Um, should you start YouTube or Instagram to document your journey about reselling? That's question one. And two, should you make your eBay store and your Amazon store public um, on your social media? I think a lot of people ask me that, like, hey, you know, they're afraid that they'll get negative feedback or backlash. Like, so I guess, should you document your journey on YouTube or Instagram? Second thing is, is if you do, should you make your eBay store or, um, and or Amazon store public? Jess, you're my, my better looking half. <laughs> hey, you guys. Hello. We need hey. some girls up in here. I, I, what I, the I, heck? I tried to get it out with Resellicious, but it didn't work. <laughs> you get 30 seconds. Go. Okay. We'll have no to. Pressure. Okay. Um, so that question, that's a funny question because I'm the reluctant YouTuber in this duo here. <laughs> right? A little bit. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> um should you you should you document on YouTube? It really comes down to what your passions are. You don't have to document anything on YouTube to make money. Uh, you know, reselling is reselling. You can be on these platforms and make money and not be on YouTube. But, however, we have found great fulfillment in helping other people reach their goals and succeed. And that's where YouTube comes into play for us. You don't make a lot of money, so don't plan on paying your bills this way. But um, it is it is amazing to see how many people can um, can learn from what we do and learn from our mistakes. But uh, again, you have to have that passion behind you, or you won't feel fulfilled from it. It will become work. It'll be really hard. And what what about the? Do you believe that you should like? Do you think it's a good idea to share your store public on social media? Um, I think if you're a good person and there's not a lot of people out there trying to hurt you, then it's probably fine. Uh, it's really up to your discretion. You know, how much exposure do you want to put on your store to possibly have someone who might not like you come in and try to mess up your metrics or something? That's really up to your discretion and how comfortable you are. I'm not going to say that anyone should share their their stores if they're not comfortable doing that. That's a good. That's good because we. I get that question all the time. Like, should I put my store public on social media? And um, yeah. it's kind of you kind of know your situation already, I believe. But um, all right, so we have a lot of easy questions now. We got past the, the hard stuff. We've got a lot of easy questions here, so we'll do rapid fire, really, really quick questions on these. Um, for those of you who are watching to see, okay, so first and foremost, the first question is, is um, um, global shipping program and or international. I'm curious to see how many of you guys are opting in just the global shipping program or if you also sell or ship and sell international. Moose, you want to you go? Oh, yeah, international, that's, that's huge. As soon as I had the option to add uh, the global shipping program, I added it to all my listings. And um, I do sell a lot of made in the US products and clothing and shoes um, overseas so what about you uh, Jim uh, yes I have global shipping available but most people don't do that option I think it's a lot more expensive so most people for me go with the calculated international shipping uh, but either way I ship worldwide I don't care where you are I'll ship to you and it, it really does help with sales some weeks I have tons of international sales and you have to do it. I really think you have to do it. So another question to you guys, and I get this a lot, and I think, Sam, you could help out, but, like, a lot of people are wondering, should I, you know, people that are already selling on eBay, they're asking kind of, like, should I have two eBay stores, like, for double exposure? What do you think? Actually, uh, having, if they're planning on listing two items on the same different accounts, I think it would just be a bit of a waste of time because they can list different items during that time because they are pretty much, competing against each other but if you're doing amazon and if you want to win the buy box you might want to you know do that but it's not it's complicated i don't want to get into that but it's just there is a positive and negative it's just depending on the person on what they're planning on doing with it cool and and so i got a question for you resell do you um do you think it's like uh um good to use white backgrounds or do you, cause a lot of people ask like, should I do pure white now or should I do like kind of what I want to do? So are you doing white background? What do you guys think about the white backgrounds? Like do majority of you guys do white backgrounds? 
So I, I've been trying to start back up with the white backgrounds lately, but it's very hard to take white photos if you're not a very skilled photographer. They'll often have like a grayish tint to the background. You have to do heavy editing. Um, I don't see a lot of people in my niche doing it. A lot of people have like wood grain or gray backgrounds and they're making really good sales. So on eBay, I don't think it's necessary right now. Just my opinion. What about you, Kevin? I know you take extremely beautiful photos. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, that actually just kind of fell into place. I use a roll top desk from the early 1900s, believe it or not. And it was like a family heirloom. I bought a property uh, that my family had built and it was there. And I threw a pair of shoes on it after, you know, selling shoes for a while and, and it kind of stuck. And then I just kept doing it because that's like, I started actually seeing fake accounts on like Craigslist and eBay stealing my photos. And that's when I knew I kind of, I had it, you know, I was like, oh man, this, you know, it's good enough for somebody to steal them and try to pretend to be me. Um, so yeah, that's what I do. I, I use like a wood grain uh, roll top desk. I, you do take beautiful photos. All right. So we'll do uh, two more questions Thanks, here. Part, part one and part two. So Jess, 30 days are good until canceled. A lot of people toggle between that. And um, I think I know what you're going to say, and I actually think it's really cool, your thought process. I steal that all the time. Uh, but also, um, do you, when you draft your items, do you draft and then list that one item, or do you draft like all your items and then just dump them all and make them live at once? What, what's your recommendation there? Uh, it really could work either way. We just recently started switching everything to good to cancel. We ran into an, the issue and, um, I'm sure other people have seen this too, where if we were doing every 30 days, which I, I'm a big fan of, if something had multiple quantity and it got relisted, it relisted with the original quantity. If we, even if we sold a few, so I'm sure some of you have dealt with that. I got tired of dealing with it cause I was doing multiples on a lot of stuff. So we switched to good to cancel recently. Um, so I'm, I've been a fan of that so far. It's been nice. It depends on what you're listing, though. I bulk list a lot of clothing because it's fast. So, yeah. And as far as the drafts go, I do. She does primarily the eBay side, so she does a lot more of the clothing stuff. So you'll do a lot of drafts ahead of time, yeah. and then go live with them. I do a lot more one-offs from garage sales, especially electronics. Um, so that one, I just do all of it from my phone still. What about you, Moose? I use Goodtail canceled. Um, I. I I just like I do a lot of multi quantity too. So when I when I go in, I'd like to just be able to add quantity. So for example, um, let's say I'm out at, at a, a source and I find a product or a, a number of the same product. I'll just when I'm looking up comps and I decide to make it, I just uh, sell similar and save as a draft right there when I'm in the store. And I'll even take a picture of the item. That way, I already have the draft ready when I get home. I just plug in the sizes, for example, and the quantities. And then if I'm out and I find that same product again, then all I have to do is go back to that listing and add more quantity or the different sizes into it. And um, I don't have to worry about it ending or, or restarting it. And as, as far as the um, whether or not I go ahead and, and just like list them all at once, I used to do that. I used to just, uh, as soon as it was ready, I would just make it live. But I noticed that um, if I do a bunch of listing and I set uh, like 10 listings a day, or a per certain like 10 listings in the morning, 10 listings in the afternoon, 10 listings in the evening to go live, then I notice a lot more steady traffic throughout my store while those listings are going live, even if I'm not listing. So that's a good tip. What about you, Jim? I am kind of lazy. I do good till canceled, but I mean, the 30 day really has a, its advantages with the search rankings. I think uh, if you want to relist stuff, sell similar, um, there's good and bad to have both of them. As far as listings, like I try to do as much batching as possible, like drafts, pictures, and then um, and then the, the final listing part. So I try to do, but I try to list every single day. So I'll try to uh, do at least ten drafts at once, if not fifteen. Nice, nice. What about you, Resellicious? Do you do good until canceled or uh, thirty days? Yeah, I do good till canceled because of errors and just getting confused with the 30 day as to what I sold, why this ended. It just I didn't want any confusion. So um, I switched over to good till canceled. And I list all my items right away just because sometimes you can list an item. It can sell overnight. You don't know which one it's going to be. So I just want to get them all listed so they're ready for someone to buy them. Nice, nice. What about you, Sam? 
Uh, good until cancel. Uh, pretty much, I just go back and revise here. Like after probably like fifteen or one month later, if it's a high end item, I just want to go there and see the market, what's going on. But I just do uh, good until cancel. What about you, Kevin? GTC, buddy. GTC. Nice, nice. All right, so this is uh, we're getting down to the nitty gritty, guys. And uh, this is a good question, I think, that a lot of people ask me. What if you know we're in summer, right? And people say summer slow down. Like, what are you doing, or what have you done if your sales are slow? So if you've noticed, like, for like a week or something, sales are slow. Is there things that you do? Um, to kind of get to, to pick up some of those sales or things that you think will help, Chess? I think for me, I'm kind of going two ways. One is you can go in and run like the promotions and do all that, you know, the sales. But one thing I've I've done is you got to look at where, where demand is, right? You can't be buying stuff that you know is not in demand right now. So what I will do is I'll sit down and per category, I'll just look at sold listings and see what types of items are selling right now. Um, you can do that, just go into different categories and look those up or different keywords, right? Um, so that's something I've played around with. And then when you go out, you know what to look for. So um, branching into different categories is, is something I'd recommend. Nice, what about you Moose? Is there something you do when kind of sales are slow? Um, list. You know, like uh, I think I think when when you're not getting those sales and you start to list it, eBay likes that active store and they like to send traffic. And it's almost like if if you list 10 things, chances are something's going to sell just because you. I, I, maybe it's just me. But every time I list, things start to sell. Also, with global shipping, you're you're hitting, you know, like it's not winter here right now. It's the middle of summer, but it is fall or winter somewhere right so like i'm i still sell coats i still sell boots i still sell a lot of the winter gear internationally so you know if, if, if you're not selling internationally you're missing out on a lot of business um another thing is obviously the, the promotions and the promoted listings but try to make sure that your pricing is current because sometimes we like to go in and list things and then we kind of forget about it and, and don't pay attention to the market you don't go back and look and see why this product isn't selling. Maybe you missed a keyword. Maybe the pricing is high. You know, a bunch of price tankers came in and undercut you. And for some reason, they're selling for less now. I think you just really have to be um, aware of everything that's going on in your store, constantly checking it and, and revamping. What about you, Jim? What do you do, buddy? Uh, to add something new, I would say to, you know, if you're most of us are selling some kind of clothing and a lot of people like to focus on the higher end stuff, but sometimes you just have to sell what's selling shorts and polo shirts right now. Right. I've, I've been doing very, very well with some of them. So, you know, sometimes you just can't sell all suits. You have to go to quote unquote lower end items, but you can still do well with them. So you just have to sell what's in season. And what do you think resell? Let's just, what do you do when sales are slow? Uh, so I've been kind of enjoying uh, the slowdown a little bit. There's less daily shipping to do. Um, and I've had more time to kind of cross post on local apps. So sometimes the prices things are going for on eBay, if you take away the shipping, the fees, and you list them on OfferUp or Facebook, you can get pretty much the same profit. And usually I don't have time to go and schedule meetings with people, but uh, I've been doing that more with uh, cleats and things like that. And that's been helping you know, getting extra cash. Nice. What about you, Sam? Uh, the one thing that I've been doing is I've been trying to pretty much mix up a lot of different things, just not closing, not shoes, just try to mix up the electronics. So you can kind of have everybody going to your store. And what the second thing you can do is try to clear out all the inventories by doing auction. That kind of drives more traffic into your stores. If you have like, you know, few, uh, auctions like here and there that kind of drives new traffic uh, into the store. So, and the other thing, just list. Pretty much, if you list the item, it will sell. Just do it. Like literally, that's if you know people. A lot they try to figure out shortcuts. It's just the, the way to do it is just list. Pretty much, that's it. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I think that's big. So we have two last questions, and then we'll we'll wrap it up because I know that we have a really cool show coming on soon over on Chaz's channel. So the last two questions, this is something that I get asked a lot. And a lot of these, a lot of these questions are, are basic, but a lot of people ask them. And I think it's, it's kind of good to go over them. So it's a two-part question. Um, Chaz, do you, have, do you guys have auto feedback on your eBay store? 
that's question number one. And then question number two, do you have, um, it's a little bit different, but do you, do you um, have auto accept or auto decline for items on your eBay store? Uh, we have, yeah, first question, yes. You got first oh, no. one. I lost my ear. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, we do have um, the auto the feedback. feedback, yeah. I forget what it is because I don't do it anymore because <laughs> it's automatic. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, no, I, I um, tried the auto decline, but I was finding that I was missing out on sales. So I, I turned that off and that was really early on. So I turned that off and now I look at all of the, the things, every, every offer that's sent to me, I look at it because maybe it's an offer that's just slightly lower than I would take, but I've had a slow week and you caught me at a good time and you get a really good deal, you know? So, um, that's the way I do it. And real quick. Do you guys get, um, when you get a low ball offer, what do you do? Do you just counter kind of the price you want? Like I know some people, they have a hard time getting kind of real low ball offers. So we'll do, I just did this last week. I forgot where I heard this tip, but I did this last week where got a low ball offer. It was like 10 bucks lower than what my low, low would be. And I replied back with what my lowest bit, my lowest acceptance would be on, on dollar amount. And I put in there too, with free shipping, this is the best I can do on this item. So I'm reminding them they're getting the item shipped for free. I heard that tip somewhere, but I used that last week. And it I think worked. you heard it for me. Was it you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. That's awesome. <laughs> that is that awesome. I think you heard. That's the beautiful. How is it? How is it? Um, how is, isn't it amazing? Like you guys can wake up and like work on the same business together, both eBay and Amazon. It's got to be really cool. It's pretty chill, yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's cool. Like it's weird because we feel like we run almost two different businesses. Because she does a lot of the eBay stuff, I'll do most of the Amazon. But we cross mm. over a lot, so it's we have our debt, we have our our dedicated roles. So there's some separation, but it's I I wouldn't trade it for anything. Wh whose role is it to like make like um you guys have um what like you're making cardboard boxes and your little guy was like you know sliding down it <laughs> that would be my job <laughs> the, the ramps are on me yeah he's an <laughs> architectural on. engineer <laughs> nice nice all right moose what do you think buddy do you uh do you have um do you have auto um decline and auto feedback and then also how do you do uh how do you do offers so as far as the auto feedback goes uh i've i've kind of experimented with it i go off and on with the, with the auto feedback so like if I do the, I slap on a little sticker on all the stuff that I send out and that kind of boosts my feedback. And I did notice that the auto feedback does raise the percentage of people that leave you a feedback, but sometimes it's not always, you know, positive feedback. Cause I feel like they don't, they don't have any repercussions. Like they're not afraid of you to leave a bad feedback. If you leave them a good feedback, they might not even know that you can't leave them a bad feedback. But um, as far as the uh, auto decline goes, I never set the auto decline just because um, any offer is a good offer. I mean, even if it's a low ball offer, I feel like I can either negotiate or play with them or, or worst case scenario, if it's like super, super low, you just leave it there. And I think that uh, that, that interaction with your listing boosts you in the search results. So no auto decline for me. Nice. Right, what about you, Jim? How do you handle? Uh, how do you guys? How do you handle low balls, low ball offers? I actually don't do best offers, so normally I don't get them. But I still get messages every day from people. So, you know, um, typically I I really don't accept any low ball offers, but I will send offers through the message uh, system. So that sometimes helps. Um, but uh, I I always have you forever for years and. Um, I think it helps, but I don't really get too many feedbacks anymore. Hmm. I don't know what happened with that. <laughs> it, it, I, I see your photos. They're like perfectly, perfectly white background. It looks like, and you, you, you uh, fold them extremely nice. So that's probably why they're extremely happy. Yeah. Uh, what, what about you, Reese Delicious? Yes, I definitely leave auto feedback. My auto feedback actually says something like, "Perfect, honest buyer." contact me if you have any issues. So I try to address uh, any possibility of negative feedback by telling them they're honest, reinforcing it, and then telling them to contact me in it. Um, 
And then as for best offer, I don't use it on a lot of items just because I try to price competitively to begin with. So I don't really want offers on my items. Um, and I just haven't had very good experiences with best offer in general. So I don't, I don't do that often. It, it's tough on shoes. You know, the margins are different, so. Yeah, the shipping and is different, it's higher. What, what, do you uh, charge shipping on your shoes? I kind of have an experiment running right now where it's kind of split, but I've noticed there's certain shoes I uh, have never gotten a return on, certain uh, models of shoes, so on those I've started switching them back to free shipping, but just to save on returns, I started adding it, kind of experimenting, so I'm 50-50. I'm nice, what, what about you, Sam? Uh, I have automatic feedback, uh, but on off uh, best offer for high for high end items, I just you know I try to get the best the right buyer to buy it, so I don't even mess with uh best offer. But what I do is I try to put my the lowest I can go because I price very competitive with other people, and most of the time I might be the only person selling that item, so I just want the high end, you know, the right price, the right part buyer to come. But on the you know, smaller items on the butter and like bread and butter items, uh, I have offer set up is most of the times about 25% uh, lower than my asking price. But uh, yeah, I have auto decline set up because I don't like dealing with back and forth. <laughs> Unless if you, they making me a good offer, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll work with them. But uh, yeah, I, can't, I just can't do it. <laughs> you can have fun though. You can go back and forth. <laughs> I know. Yeah, they... Have you guys had like what's your record on back and forth? Like I think four is mine, but I'm sure you you've seen some pretty crazy crazy stuff. You know, seven isn't seven the max? I can't remember. I think it's four or five. Is it? Yeah, oh. as, if you do auto decline, I think it's four time. Huh. Sometimes I just like to go back and see how many people declined, and sometimes <laughs> I see like fourteen people. So I just wait for the right buyer. Yeah. Sam, how do you handle having multiple stores? Do you have like, because you can't do it all on one phone. You have to have two phones with you, right? How many phones do you have? Seven. <laughs> Seven? <laughs> oh, wow. Holy OSS God. Empire, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it's crazy. Wow. How well, do you keep all those charged? <laughs> most of I don't even not. think about that. Can we see your charging station? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like for... Yeah. For eBay, I have a, you know, I have people listing as well, so I just kind of keep them on that phone. I just leave it on the station. But personally, I carry three phone on myself for the main account for Amazon and uh, to eBay because I I kind of want to deal with people if they message me right away. But uh, overall, I have different servers, different computers. It's a bit crazy. <laughs> yeah. You have a dedicated pocket for each phone you carry. <laughs> like you know which one's the eBay one, which <laughs> Yeah, they're all different. Like I have plus yeah. That's pretty, good. That, that's pretty amazing, guys. I Sam, I, I wanna say um that you're you're pretty incredible. I don't know how you do some of the stuff you do. I, I saw the other day on your Instagram you broke a phone or something and you're like, Oh just typical Sam. <laughs> like, you know, another phone. <laughs> so I last thing and then we got to get going here um, we always end those of you who have seen my show we always end it on a positive note and um, so words of wisdom we always do this every single show now it could be eBay related Amazon related it could be reselling related or it could be not it's just something that you do to uplift people positive positive stuff so we'll start with Chaz what kind of what kind of, I know you're uh, you're uh, you're doing fitness right you're doing all kinds of stuff like you got to be you're a pretty positive guy what kind of words of wisdom can you give the crowd here my biggest one I preach every day is especially with entrepreneurs people trying to build their side hustles you're putting in late nights sometimes early mornings you've got to remember to take care of yourself that's my number one thing I preach is you are no good to anyone unless you feel your best because when you feel your best you give your best and it's as simple as that you can you, I don't care how many millions that you're doing. You feel like crap every day. It's not, it's not really worth it, is it? So take care of yourself. I don't care if that's a 10 minute walk each day, meditation, yoga, whatever floats your boat, just do something that's going to fill up your cup. Cause that allows you to go fill everyone else's. I like that. I like that. What, what about you, Moose? I'd say right now, everybody's taking vacations and spending time with uh, family and, and really taking it easy. And so if, if you want to really do well, come Q4, you got to start putting in the work today. You need to get out there and hustle, 
buy, 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 because the this, this stuff is out there waiting right now. The, the competition is slacking. They're sitting by the pool sipping a pina colada. So you got to get out there <laughs> and buy the products. And when they sell come Q4, you'll be the one laughing all the way to the bank. So um, we got Jim next. And Jim, buddy, um, you would be jealous because I bought a pool, put it in my backyard. It's oh, not yeah. as cool as yours, but um, what kind of words of wisdom can you give, my man? Uh, well, I think a lot of us pay attention to Gary V, and you know, I, we've all heard it before, but it, worth, it bears saying again is patience. Like whether you're trying to wait for your items to sell, just be patient, and also be patient in learning the reselling game. Like don't just give it six months or even a year. Give it two or three years. Like I've been doing this since 2013, and I have come such a far way. Um, you know, I mean, just be patient. <laughs> I, I would agree. I wish it's very, very hard to do, but just be patient. I wish I was patient on my stocks this morning, Sam. <laughs> um, I wish I could show you my e trade account right now. But uh, all right, resell licious. Um, yeah, I, I would say to encourage people that in this business, you can start from pretty much nothing. You don't really need much money. I mean, you can start selling books you can buy for 25 cents and you can build up to a thousand dollar business. So um, just no matter where you're starting point, no matter if you're broke, you don't have any money, you can work your way up. Just depends on how hard you work. This is probably the only thing I've found where I've worked hard on it and my work has produced based on my effort. Other things just didn't work, but this does. So just put in the work. If you want it, you can get it. That's solid advice. There's so much love in chat, by the way, guys. Learned a lot from you, Jim. Last night I had an interview, and so they were praising Chaz. Um, she was she was saying that you you reached out to her and helped her out with her Amazon business, and so much love in this chat for you guys. I'm glad you guys joined. So what about you? What about you, Sam? What what kind of words of wisdom can you give? Uh, don't be afraid to uh, ask questions, and just and just don't ask questions. Just, just give and take uh, in this community. So just share your ideas, or share share your struggles, because everybody is there to step and you know help and make even great decisions. Because a lot of time I just try to share what I'm doing every day, and people message me, "Hey, don't do that. That's not the right thing." Especially while I'm driving, don't record a drive. That I get that a lot, but just you know. <laughs> Share what you're going through. Don't be because we all going through it. We have been, we all have been through that. So just share what you're doing because you will receive positive and negative feedbacks, and you kind of have to, you know, take what's best for you, and uh, you know, just leave it at that. Sam, uh, do you ever get like people reach out to you and be like, "Dude, only use two cell phones, not five? <laughs> no, actually, they ask uh, how do how you do it, and I don't like giving that advice because uh, how I got here is because of the mistakes that I made. I I was actually planning on making vi making video about how I got suspended three times in three three different accounts on Amazon. So it's all trial and error to get to where I am. So I don't give advice to anyone. <laughs> After the show, guys, Sam's giving away free ink. So you know. <laughs> um, all right. Well, Chas too. He gets a lot of ink. I don't know where he gets it from in Oregon, but uh, you won't find it on Marketplace. That's for sure. <laughs> Snatched it all. <laughs> well, guys, I want to thank you so much for joining. Um, it's meant a lot to me to do this. I'm sorry we couldn't get through all the questions. The first trial run. Every two weeks, I want to do this again. I want to do one for Amazon, even though I'm a newbie. And um, I appreciate everybody joining. Now, I, if you're watching this after the fact, I put everybody's link below. So all their YouTube links are below, their Instagram stuff. Um, please reach out to them. They're amazing. Uh, I, I guess so much, like I said, so much love for everybody that's in chat. All you regulars out there that watch me always request these guys. And, and I'm glad they're able to, able to come on. Um, real quick, um, Chaz, Side Hustle Pros, is having a show right now, I think, or in a few minutes. So, guys, jump on his channel. He's going live, live Q&A. He'll answer some more of these questions probably. And um, Primetime Treasures, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it, buddy. I love you. Thank you for coming on my channel. And uh, thanks, guys, for, for, for joining. Guys, hop on Chaz's channel now. And I uh, appreciate, appreciate you guys joining. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. We appreciate it, too. Thank, Thank, you. Having us. Thank you for having us. All right. I'll see you. See you guys. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye now.